Hello, heroes. I promised that I would give you some approaches for reflective teaching and its practice in your own classrooms. This subject has been extensively researched because it is very important. But researchers do this all in controlled conditions. Schools give them special privileges and they conduct their research in ideal situations. So when the research is written up, it seldom has an easy fit in the insanely busy lives of regular school teachers and the recommendations are often impractical. Researchers suggest that we should keep journals on a daily basis or have regular peer reflective sessions where a colleague should sit in on your class and watch you teach and then provide you with critical feedback. Once you found the time to do this, then you should also find the time to return the favor. And then you should find the time to do this regularly. I can almost hear you laughing from here. In my own work, I use three approaches and they really work for me. The first is what Sean calls reflecting on action. After a lesson, I run through it in my head. I use some simple questions to guide my thinking. What worked well during this lesson? It's important to acknowledge this so that I can build on the strategy for future teaching. If something works, I can refine it and bring it into forthcoming lessons. Then I ask, what did not work well? Further questions around this might be learner response, the way that I was feeling while I was teaching, and the challenges that I faced in reaching the outcomes of the lesson. After every question, I ask why, and it always has to do with my own actions. It's too easy to say that the learners were restless or didn't behave appropriately. I should always ask what I did, because remember, we are the influencers, and if something is not working, even if it is learner behavior, then we have to find a way to fix it. The next step is to ask what I can change that will possibly make a difference in the next lesson. The second approach is what Sean calls reflecting in action. And here we use intuitive or tacit knowledge. Remember I've spoken about that? Sometimes when I teach, I just know that a lesson is not working. I take a mental pause and look at what is happening as if from the outside. Have I made myself clear? What does the problem seem to be? Why are the learners responding like this? I sometimes even stop the lesson and actually ask the learners. The more we do this, the more we'll get real answers. Sometimes the response is that they're exhausted or have just come from a physically exertive lesson and they just can't concentrate. Other times they'll say that they've spent the whole day sitting and listening. In these instances, I quickly change the pace of the lesson or give them something to do that is active and that involves group work. Sometimes their answers are a little harder to hear. I might have used words that they don't understand and they just switch off. Or they might even find my, find my approach boring. Reflecting in action gives us the opportunity to quickly assess what is going wrong with the lesson and to change its course immediately. The third approach is involving your learners. They are the observers of our teacher identities after all, and they are the recipients of our teaching styles, and they know us well. Use a simple questionnaire, make it anonymous, and ask only two questions. What did you enjoy about this lesson? And the next question, what do you think we can do differently in a future lesson? Of course, you'll get the jokers who will respond by telling you that they'd rather have longer break times or that they'd like to be able to eat in class. But you'll also get some very sincere answers. And the more you do this, the more sincere the responses will become. Carefully looking through your learner's work is always an option. 
if you look to find how you have taught instead of how they have performed, you'll be amazed at the answers you find. Once we have identified an issue, the next step is to find a possible solution. This is followed by trying it out. This becomes a cycle. Try it out, reflect, what worked, what was a challenge, find a solution. Try it out, reflect, what worked, what was a challenge, what was a solution. Just keep the cycle going. Try to make this a part of your everyday thinking so that it becomes an almost natural part of your teaching. It will happen. I would love to read some comments from you after you've tried this. There really is not going to be anyone else who helps us to improve our practices. Everyone is just too busy. It's up to be us to be honest and sincere. And it's very important to find our successes. But it's even more important to open ourselves up to admitting that we have flaws in our work and to finding out what they are and trying to find solutions. Because once we acknowledge that, we can go on a quest to improve. And don't we all want to be that one teacher, the one influencer whom our learners remember for the rest of their lives because we were amazing? Of course we do. That's the reason that we're teaching after all, to make a difference and to change the world. Go and do it bravely and stay safe. I will see you all again.